Hey, this is Matt Wimmer from Brady Precision. In this video, we're taking a look at the new Jace 9000, the next generation Jace 8000. Uh, and it looks like this. This is a beta unit, so, uh, but hardware and looks are identical to what you'll see out of the production unit. Uh, shape, size are basically identical to the 8000. You can see we've got a little bit of a difference here with like some of the ridges and stuff. Um, and But most of the changes are here underneath the lid. Uh, but let's uh, jump into some of the details and I'll explain to you what those differences are. So hardware-wise differences between the 9000 and the 8000. The main one is that our clip is now just a uh, smaller patch on the top. This is so that uh, when they were making the clips, they don't have to make two separate clips for Wi-Fi and non-Wi-Fi versions. Just make the single one. Don't have the markings on it at all. Just have it on the, the base case. Uh, oh, you can see our, our debug port changed. We got rid of the USB-A backup and backup buttons. Um, and our shutdown button is now what our backup button uh, used to be. So that's basically the hardware changes on the 9000. All right, so we've got our Jace 9000. As I mentioned, it has the same footprint and connector locations as the 8000. Makes your uh, swapping in super easy. You don't have to worry about moving uh, connections or wires around like we did when we upgraded to the 8000. Uh, it supports all the existing expansion modules. This includes um, your uh, remote I.O. modules. Uh, we've got a faster CPU, significantly faster. We've got more RAM. Storage situation has changed up a little bit, um, and we'll go into that here in a moment. And we have some really nice quality of life changes. Uh, we've got new LED patterns for the heartbeat that tell us where we are in the startup process. And we've got a new system for backup. Uh, and This makes use of the SD card, um, and we'll talk about that as well. So availability. Um, the non-Wi-Fi version uh, will be available around October of this year, 2023. And then the Wi-Fi version will be available around the second quarter of 2024. So the 8000 versus the 9000, why would you use the 9000 versus the 8000? So the first thing, as you can see, is uh, our processor. Big, big difference. We were using a single core 1 gigahertz processor on the 8000. 9000 takes a significant jump. We're using a quad core processor now and it's 1.6 gigahertz. So not only is it faster, we've got more of them. Another really big change that you're not really going to notice at all uh, is that the operating system underneath Niagara is no longer using QNIX. It's using Ubuntu Core uh, 20, which is uh, Linux, uh, which allows for some potential really cool things in the future, depending on what uh, Tritium decides to do. And our memory situation, we've doubled the memory. So instead of a gig, we which we had on the uh, 8000, we now have two gigs. We also now have some onboard storage, and uh, we'll talk about that a little bit more later on. Uh, but the 9000 actually has 8 gigs of EMMC built into the uh, Jace itself, as well as having um, an 8 gig SD card, whereas the 8000 had a 4 gig SD card. We still have the same number of RS-45 ports. Uh, we no longer have that USB-A port on the top for USB backup, but as I'll explain, I think the uh, the onboard storage and the SD card sort of mitigate that uh, removal. Uh, our Ethernet is now gigabit instead of only 100 meg. Uh, we've got some more uh, SRAM uh, data recovery space, uh, so maybe run into less uh, data recovery issues, which we've definitely seen in the past. Uh, Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi is the same, but the two separate models, so the Wi-Fi and the non-Wi-Fi, um, are with and without, physically with and without the Wi-Fi chip. So if you've worked on any government jobs, they're not huge fans of Wi-Fi being turned off in firmware or software. They really would like the device not to have Wi-Fi at all. And with the uh, change up here in the models, that's uh, that's the way it's going to work going forward. 
also with the Wi-Fi model. You also get Bluetooth alongside. Uh, Tritium has some stuff planned for that in the future. Nothing available yet. Obviously, the Wi-Fi model is not even here yet, uh, but nice little uh, quality of life change potentially. And then our debug port is no longer micro USB, it's uh, USB-C, which is a very nice change. Um, USB-C is a significantly better connector than uh, micro USB. So performance, what do we get from those uh, changes in the specs? So the, the main one that we noticed in the testing and using our beta unit, which is the same hardware as you're going to get in the, uh, in the actual production unit, is uh, on a startup from a blank new station. So we just went to in Niagara and opened up or created a new station, plugged it into a 9,000, plugged it into an 8,000. And with the 9,000, we were looking at around two and a half minutes for that station to completely start up. And with the 8,000, we looked at about four minutes. So you can sort of scale that as your stations get bigger and, and so on. Uh, but our platform was up in about a minute and a half. Uh, and that's really um, easy to see with some of the LED changes that we'll mention here in a moment. And another really interesting thing that Tritium's doing is uh, they're making use of all four cores on that CPU now on boot. So we boot up as fast as possible. But in a normal state, you'll see in uh, Workbench, if you go into the platform on your station and look at like the, the details, you'll see that there's only two cores that are showing up for the... Um, for the station itself, and one core for the platform itself, and then they keep one core in reserve because if, if you've run into this before, things like uh, network scanners and stuff like that could pull down uh, a JS8000 which only had the single core because it was overloading the core and the core couldn't do anything about it. Now they're sort of keeping some performance in the background uh, that can be used uh, in cases where maybe there's a, a significant spike. So our new uh, heartbeat LED patterns, like I mentioned, so we've now got three different patterns that the heartbeat will show up in. We've got a fast blink, a short blink, and a regular blink. And I'll show, you to, show those to you now. Uh, with our fast blink, that's just signifying that uh, the system, so the operating system is up. But Niagara is, uh, the Niagara Daemon is just starting, and we don't have a station running. And then we get to a short blink, so short on, long off. Uh, that means that our system's up and our Daemon is running, but we have no station running yet. This is really nice because instead of having to just continually try to connect to our platform when a, a Jace is coming up, you can just wait for the short blink to show up, and then you know you can get in. And then uh, we have a regular heartbeat. So the one second on, one second off means that the uh, system's up, our daemon's up and running, and our station's up and running. And now we get to the backup stuff that I mentioned before. Uh, so now the station runs completely off of the onboard at EMMC. It doesn't run off the SD card. And uh, instead, we're doing an automatic full backup at 2 a.m. every day to that SD card. Um, you don't have to do anything about it. It will automatically back up there, and it will keep as many backups as it can on that SD card. For a typical station, you're probably looking around two or three backups, according to Tritium. And uh, the backup button that we previously had on the 8000 is no longer there. It's now a shutdown button, so it basically just performs an orderly shutdown of the Jace uh, so that you can unplug it safely. Uh, but it still functions as a factory reset. So some additional uh, bits and pieces of things. Uh, we now have some diagnostics that are accessible from the shell. Uh, the shell works the same way as it did with the 8000, uh, but we'll have a video on that soon that sort of goes over that. Um, our host IDs look slightly different. So first bit is that we have the Atlas at the beginning instead of the Titan, which we saw with the 8000. And then there's this SD bit, which means that the uh, host ID is coming from the SD card. And a really important thing to note is that SD cards uh, from the 8000 are not compatible with the 9000. So keep that in mind if you're upgrading from an 8000 to a 9000. So roadmap stuff, what Tritium says is coming down the, the pike. Uh, we've got the 413 release, which is coming in Q2 2024, and that's going to be timed with the uh, 9000, which has Wi-Fi. 
Uh, that'll also allow for DHCP server support on the secondary port, which I know uh, is useful for some guys because they use it for their field devices. And then we've got uh, 802.1x support, so port-based authentication um, for your Ethernet. And then we've got uh, CCN driver is going to be coming with 413 as well. And then roadmap-wise for the 9000 itself, um, Tritium is looking at potentially providing some remote device management, so management of your JSES through the cloud potentially. Um, using the 9000 as an edge computing platform, which I think is a really interesting, uh, if they're if they're saying what I think they're saying, uh, I think is a really interesting thing now that the uh, 9000 is running Ubuntu instead of QNX. Uh, a mobile management UI so that you could log into the JSE over Bluetooth and potentially make configuration changes directly on Bluetooth without having to log in uh, through a browser, or pull up your PC or something like that. And the processor that's in the 9000 has a neural processing unit. So Tritium is looking at uh, potentially adding in some machine learning capabilities down the road as well. So that does it for the uh, 9000. Hopefully that uh, was informative. We'll have a bunch more videos coming on, so a little bit more in depth on features like the backup and uh, those additional diagnostic features in the shell. So thanks for watching. If you haven't already, subscribe. Leave a comment down below if there's something you'd like to see uh, that I didn't cover about the 9000. And we'll see you in the next video. Thanks.